everyone, I'm Salma from Purpose Code and in today's video we're gonna see together how to send data from the front end to the back end. And by the way, I also wrote an entire article and tutorial about that, so if you prefer reading instead of watching a video, you can check my link in the description below. So let's get started. <laughs> So now let's go to VS Code and create a new project, create a new folder. So on my side I have already a folder created which is games and inside of it I have already an index.html file. If you don't have an index.html file, please create one. So we're gonna add some, uh, some uh, HTML information, some uh, HTML data. So let's change the title of our page first. Let's say here, send data to the backend. Okay. And now let's just add something, uh, some information that the user can enter so that we can send them to the backend. So here, let's say, I'm gonna add some uh, inputs. Okay. So the first input is going to be of type text, like this. Uh, I'm going to give this input a class of username. And in this first input, I'm going to ask the user to enter their name. All right. And let's add three other inputs. Or the last one is going to be a button, like this, send data. And here, for the second uh, input, is going to be email. So I'm going to ask the user to add their email. And the type of input will be email. And the class is user email. And then here, the third input is going to be city. So I'm going to ask the user to enter their city and here the type is going to be text and then the class name is going to be user city. Okay. So let's go quickly to uh, index.html here and display this page on the browser. So uh, here we have our inputs aligned. Let's just make them vertically aligned. So we can just add a BR tag here. So BR tag is normally to skip a line between the elements like this. And let's refresh. So we have our inputs here. So now let's just add a little bit of space between our uh, elements. Let's go back here. So we're not going to add any styling. We're going to add just a little bit of margin between the input elements so that we have a little bit of space between them. So a margin uh, at the top and the bottom of 10 pixels and right and left of 0 pixels. Like this. Let's go back and refresh. And we have our input elements here. So now, how can we send the data of the user once the user enters their data? How can we send it to uh, the backend? So to do that, we're gonna use the fetch API. So first, let's add a script tag here. Okay. And let's just say that at the click of the button, I want the data to be sent to the back end. How can we do that? So first, let's select our elements. Okay, let's say, uh, for example, here, my name is document.query selector. And then we're going to select the first input. 
okay and then we're gonna select all other inputs like this and here it's gonna be email and then user email and here the variable is city and here is gonna be user city and then finally we're gonna select the button like this and it's gonna be documents.query selector button and then we're gonna say that at the click of the button we want to send the data to the back end so the button should listen to an event which is the click event okay then the function that we want it to be executed is whenever the the user clicks on the button first create a variable which is an object and this object is going to contain the value of our input elements so the first value is going to be name and which is going to be the input my name dot value so to access the value of this input we just add my name dot value and then the second property of the object is going to be email so to access the value of the email input we're going to say my email dot value and for the third property it's going to be city and then my city dot value so this is our object so now every time the user enters information and click and clicks at the button so a new variable will be generated by default okay so now we want to send the data of this variable to the backend okay so to do that we're gonna just use the fetch api and we're gonna say we're gonna set a url where the data is gonna be sent so we're gonna tell the browser listen we want to send the data to this url for example to slash contact let's say contact okay so the name of the url you can choose any name you want it's gonna, it, it can be slash contact, slash API, slash home, whatever you want. So in this example, we're gonna say slash contact. Okay. And then I'm gonna add the method that's gonna be used to send the data. And the method is a post method. And I'm gonna add the headers, information about the headers. So, the content type of the headers is going to be application slash json because fetch api works with json data and then body which is uh, the body that's uh, that's going to be containing the information which means it's going to be containing the data or the object variable so we're going to transform the json data into string so we're going to have a stringified json data so to do that we're just going to do json.stringify and the object variable like this okay so now we're all set so now we told the front end to send data to slash contact url but this slash contact url it does not exist yet so we have to set the routing for this slash contact url because if the user clicks on the send button the browser will tell them that actually the the slash contact 
URL does not exist. So to make it possible to send data, we're going to go to the index.js. So you should create an index.js file. And inside this index.js, we're going to work and require the uh, express um, package. So if, if you don't have express, I advise you to install it. So all you have to do is to come to the uh, to node JS terminal here and type npm install express. So for me, I'm not gonna uh, install it because I already have it. But if you don't, just install it like this. Once you install the express npm, we should require it here. So we're gonna set a variable express require express. So now we have imported the express package in this index.js file. We can work with it. Now we're gonna create uh, another variable where we're gonna call the express function <coughs> and then we're gonna tell the server to listen to a certain port. For example, in this example, I'm gonna take port 3000, but you can take any port you, you want. For example, port uh, 8080 works very well also. So here, we're gonna tell the server to listen to port app.listen to port 3000, like this. So now, what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna try first, uh, before we move forward, we're gonna try to display the HTML page through our server. So we're gonna let the server serve the HTML page. So for that, we're gonna set a get request, okay? So we're gonna tell the server, uh, for example, get us the, the index.html page. So, here we're gonna just uh, choose a name of our URL, let's say for example slash home and here we're gonna have the server has actually uh, a function that takes two parameters and then we're gonna say, we're gonna tell the server response.send I'm gonna explain all of this send file index.htm so here what what we have done here actually we we told the server every time we request the dot the the slash home uh, url please send us the index.html file so here again same thing it doesn't have to be slash home it can be just slash or slash API or slash about for example let's just work with slash home in this example so we're, we're gonna tell the browser every time we end the URL with slash home please send the file which is index.html and we should specify the location of this index.html so here in our example index.html is here index.html is here okay so it is in the root directory okay so here I'm gonna say root directory name okay so now we can start our server and display our HTML page. So to, to run our server, on my side I have uh, installed a package called Nodeman. So Nodeman keeps the server going and running. Uh, to install it, same thing, all you have to do is to come to the um, console here and type npm install Nodeman like this and install nodeman okay and once installed all you have to do is nodeman and type the index.js file and hit enter so now our server is running okay 
So let's go to to here to the back to to the browser, and here we have a new page. Uh, so now let's type uh, the address one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one, which is the local host uh, address because we're working locally on our computer. So port three thousand, and we said that if we want uh, the HTML page to be displayed, we have to require slash. Uh, we have to request the slash home URL, okay? So now let's hit enter and we have here our input. So now this HTML page is displayed through Node.js, okay? So let's go back here to the index.js file and now we will set the routing for this slash contact URL. So here we will say app.post and then slash contact. Okay, why we did here post? Because we're gonna post the data. Okay, the type of the method or the type of the operation is post so we're gonna set a routing for post method okay so here we have same thing request and response and now all we have to do is to console.log the the data here we're gonna try to console.log the data received from the front end here uh, in the console of node.js so here all we have to do is to type console.log request dot body so the body is the body that we set here that contains the object which is this variable that contains all the data so to access the body all we have to do re is request dot body okay so now let's go to to the browser okay and let's just add some information like here for example name joan email joan at gmail.com and here city let's say london and let's click on send data so let's see if we have our data console in the console so here as you can see we have the undefined okay we have undefined why because actually our server does not understand or express does not understand the json data so to make express understand that the data sent to it is a json data all we have to do is to add a middleware which is app.use express dot json like this okay and now as you can see so we have our data here logged in the node.js which means in the backend of our application so this is how we uh, send data from the front end to the back end so next time we're gonna see how to take this data and send it to a database and store it okay so that's all for the moment i hope you liked the video if so hit the subscribe button and see you next time